She captured the attention of fans not just in Canada but all over the world with her play and her personality. She went all the way to the US Open final. She is Canada's number one tennis singles player, Leila Fernandez, and leading her every step of the way has been her father, Jorge Fernandez. They join us now for an exclusive interview looking back on the year that was and ahead to 2022. Jorge, Leila, it is great to see both of you. Thanks so much for making the time to do this. No problem. Thank you for having us. We are super excited. <laughs> Absolutely. Leila, starting with you, when we first spoke at the beginning of the year, your goal was to be a top 10 player by year end. You are world number 24. You didn't quite get there, but you showed that you can absolutely play at a top 10 level. What improvements in your game are you most proud of when you look back on the year? Um, it's, a, it's a little hard to say because, you know, I was not too happy with, the, with my year. You know, I've always, I always have goals in the beginning of the year and we want to achieve them. And when I don't achieve them, that means I did not do a good year. But um, for, for, for me personally, I think I did, a, I did a, a good job near the end. I was able to bounce back after difficult months and that's what I was most proud of and the biggest improvement I did. I was able to you know, forget, get, have that mentality, forget about the past matches, forget about the past results, and just focus on the tournament that is going on right now, which was the US Open and then afterwards the Indian Wells. And I was able to bounce back, play, play with the same uh, hunger, same attitude with uh, more of a champion of an athlete that wants to compete and I was able to do that pretty well this uh, this end of year. Jorge, she's sounding just like you. I mean, there were some people that would have looked back on the US Open and said, oh, Jorge's got to be thrilled about it. They're saying, oh, why isn't Jorge happy enough uh, about yeah. this US Open run? Uh, take us into, you know, your feelings about that final and, you know, the mindset of making sure that she's pushing to that ultimate goal. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a that's a great question. And it's and it's difficult. I mean, you have to look at it from two perspectives. Of course, um, I can't I can't say, oh, you know, it, it's disappointing. You know, the result was disappointing. The year was bad. As a father, as a father, I'm always going to say it was a fantastic year. Are you kidding? You're 19 years old. You're number one player in Canada. You're 24 in the world. You know, um, it has been difficult, but you stepped up to the challenge. And as a father, I can be more proud than that. But you, we all have to remember that I'm wearing another hat as well, which is the coach hat. And, and when we decided that to pursue the professional career, we wanted to be number one. And of course, a lot of people say you're crazy. And a lot of people would say, you know, they would laugh at that goal because of many reasons. But for us, you know, it's what we believe in. We really believe it. We breathe it from the professional outlook. We didn't quite meet our objective. And of course, I share her sentiment because, you know, we work the goals together. We work together. We know each other, you know, inside and out. Now, Leila, as you continue this ascent and continue to work on your game and improve, uh, there's a lot of media obligations that come. There's a lot of things to take away your time from tennis. By the way, you were at the Sports Illustrated Awards uh, the other day. Uh, what's it like being on a first name basis with Billie Jean King? It's, uh, it's pretty surreal. You know, <laughs> I've read, I've watched uh, Billie Jean King I play, read her book. Uh, learned about her so it's uh, pretty surreal to be actually talking to her uh, keep in contact and uh, she's just an amazing person uh, she always comes to me she she always asks how my family is how they are if they're doing great then she asks how I am not only as an athlete but as a person like am I okay am I am I happy am I still loving the sport because that's ultimately the the, the reason why we're playing this for is because we love the, the competition, we love tennis. So it's, a, it's always a, it's a great experience to, to talk with her and then to, to get to know each other a little bit more and then obviously pick her brain a little bit. She's a legend, so I get to, I get to, to learn more from her in person. 
Um, but other than that, I think I'm very lucky to have my 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 coach, my dad, as a in my team to really balance things out. He knows when is the, when is time to push the machine harder, when to put the turbo in and like to push the limits. And then he knows when to kind of back off and maybe, oh, this is a good time to do a few interviews here and there. But I'm I'm very lucky to have him. I'm lucky to have great uh, a great team behind me to to understand that this change is gonna come and that we just need to be able to adapt. And I know my my number one focus will always be tennis. So even even with all the interviews, I'm loving it. I know that right now the most important thing is to improve my tennis game, to reach our goals. Um, 24 is not our favorite number. We want to be number one. <laughs> <laughs> Jorge, as Leila said, you know, no one knows her better than you. So what's something that maybe fans don't get to see obviously they love her personality they love what she can do on the court but day to day what is something that fans don't get to see that you love about her approach you know she's she's quite a character right she's she's very unbelievably happy all the time unbelievably loving all the time um, she cares a lot about what's going on. And I, I think sometimes I get the impression that people think that maybe it's just kind of in the moment, but it's not. It's a constant, it's a constant, you know, Layla is the same every day, right? So I think if the fans could see that, they would see that she's very genuine. That's why, her, you know, she seems so real, right? I mean, it's, it's like she just spoke from a real place and that's because that's who she is and when you see it every day i think it motivates you to be a better person just in general right because if if you know this girl who's working like crazy can still find good in everything so can we you know the girl's got a heart of a lion you know and she doesn't she doesn't mind staring me down and holding her ground and, and knowing that the work that she's putting in is for something that she wants. Anytime there's an athlete parent relationship, you see that narrative come of, oh, you know, maybe the parent needs to step aside and have someone else come in and take the athlete to that next level. What is your response to that? I've been trying to quit since she was seven. <laughs> I'm the one that's bringing him back. I'm the one that's telling me, don't quit on me now. I need you. <laughs> From afar, the easy thing to say is like, you should step aside. And I agree 100%. And believe me, I've tried. Um, it's been a little bit difficult because, you know, there are other emotions, you know, and I'll be very honest. You know, my daughter looks at me and says, why do you don't believe in me anymore? Is it because I'm, is it because I'm losing? Is it because of that? Is it because it, it, it brings other emotions that people are not privy to, you know? Um, and I come to conclusions and arrangements with Layla that are very personal. But she knows that everything that I do is for her to be independent in the very near future. I will always be part of the team, but the objective is for her to have her own coach. I have interviewed, I have discussed, not only interviewed, I should say, and we've had conversations with many coaches. And then we start talking about philosophies. We start talking about objectives. We start talking about, you know, uh, how you see the family, how you see the business, how you see Layla. And, and sometimes we just don't match, although we're very professional. It just doesn't match. And uh, anybody that knows me knows that I don't like flipping coaching teams or teams. You know, if we make a decision, we want to stay together for a very long time because the career only lasts 10 years mm -hmm. and i say only 10 years of course it can last a few more years but the best of the best is only 10 years on average it, it isn't as simple as what people think but you know I, the most important message to to everyone is that believe me i am not here because i absolutely want to and i'm ruling with an iron fist this is not it I have um, a daughter who believes in my ability to get the best out of her, who believes in my ability um, to get the best tennis for her. The entertaining tennis that you see on TV came from somewhere. So somewhere along the line, we've, we've been doing good. 
and we're going to keep doing in that going in that direction and as a father i want her to be independent and i hope that in the next couple of years she will have a full time coach and um she'll be able you know to be a, a, a you know full professional with her own coaching team with her own fitness team and 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 tackle the world of tennis Well Leila, I'll ask you a simple question. Are we going to see your dad in the player box at a Grand Slam? It all depends with him. I always tell him I want him in my matches. I want you to come, but he has to come in the first two rounds because then afterwards it's just too late. But <laughs> you know, I'm um, every every tournament my dad always asks me, "Do you want me to travel with you? Do you want me to watch your matches?" And my answer is always yes because um he's my number one coach. he knows he knows exactly what to tell me what to what to tell me before a match what to what to look for during practices and then also he's my greatest support he gives me strength and you know every time i look at him i know i have the confidence to do anything i have the confidence to tackle any problems that that's in front of me and no matter the result everything will just be fine at the end of the day i think most most people just see me just just see the the rough perspective right yeah. um but they they have to understand that when nobody really believed in her when you know people thought that she was too small that she was too weak and that uh, she didn't have a game you know i was the one who believed in her i was the one who said you know hun This world is so great that you can achieve anything you set your mind and heart to. When you see a relationship, you can't just say, "Oh, he's very tough." There's other reasons why she's there, also, and there's other reasons why we're together. And I think that's just an important part. That's why I always ask her, out of respect, "Do you want me to go?" Leila, while we're on the subject of achieving anything you set your mind to, what are your goals for 2022? Um, I think the number one goal is always to finish the year with great health physically, mentally and emotionally. That's always been our 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 goal every year. My dad and I that's number one that's on our wall saying, you know, every year we have to finish with great health and uh, to still have that love for the sport because if we can't have that love for the sport, it's so hard to restart training, to keep pushing the limits to our physical ability, mental ability for the next season. So that's the number one. And then number two, um, tennis wise, I think it's a uh, break the top 10, um, get to finish the year top 10, play the WTA finals. And then afterwards is win a few uh, WTA titles. Um, 250s, 500s, 1000s and obviously I need to get that grand slam under my belt. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wonderful to see. Mm-hmm. To wrap up, is there a favorite Fernandez family tradition over the holidays that you two are looking forward to? I'm looking forward to train. I'm looking forward for a jog, Bobby, you know. <laughs> we we got that date on the 24th and the 25th. We got that 2 mile run. Yeah, and every time we always do that. Mm-hmm. But from a, from a personal perspective what we like to do is that we usually go and and buy some gifts um and then we drop them off at the children's hospital. So I'm looking forward to that because yeah. when we've had the rough years and we didn't have much going on and we didn't have much, you know, we always did that and now that we have more and things are looking brighter you know this is when we get to roll up our sleeves and hopefully get the whole family to do more than what we've ever done in the past when we didn't have much so i'm looking forward to that that's the season of gi- <laughs> it's the season of giving no time better so leila jorge i just want to thank you for taking the time to do this and hopefully we'll chat soon